Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to show you how to use the gradient tool to get somewhat more of a vignette effect without using the vignette option or using it in conjunction with the vignette option. Um, the vignette itself in Photoshop is a very cool tool, it's very useful, adds a very professional look but if there's that one picture where you just want to add a little more without adding too much and to get it more specific then this is this is a great way to do it using the gradient tool alright so what I've done here is I've got this horse picture that I got from somebody else and I've already selected the horse because I'm going to add that as another layer so to duplicate that or to create a new layer with that selection you can just hit control J or you can copy and paste it doesn't matter control J just does it a lot quicker and uh, before I did that I duplicated the layer and just turned it off but for this exercise we're going to turn it on and right here we're going to on this layer we're going to go to filter lens correction and then we're going to go to the custom tab and go to vignette turn it all the way on now what I did before I went through all this process a little while ago and before I did all this I added blur to it and there's a way you can do that so we'll do that first so the first thing I want to do is if you want the blur to be on the background I want to blur this middle section so that it's blurred as if it's out of focus in the background and I want to leave the top section of the trees and the bottom section of the grass pretty much intact so what we'll do is we'll select the bottom layer go to filter blur Gaussian or Gaussian blur and put it on whatever you like we're gonna put it on that and then on this layer we're gonna add a mask and then use the gradient tool to show just a little bit of the blur on the top and the bottom now depending on your picture and depending on your colors over here your foreground and your background color you'll have to play with it to make sure that you're working with the right style or layer pattern whatever so we'll come over here and we'll just create a layer mask down here and you can also you can do it um, depending on which way which layer you're working with when you create a layer a mask you can leave it as it is if it's on the top or on the bottom but if it's on if it's this way you'd want to click on your mask and hit control I to invert it so that it's blurred because when we use the gradient tool we're going to take this away so hold your alt button roll your mouse wheel out to zoom out because you're going to need a good bit of space so that it blends a lot better your colors have to be the right way otherwise it won't do it and to get it just right you may have to zoom out and come down the reason I use this tool is because it'll let you do multiple passes within one layer or one picture or whatnot if you use this one right here the first one I'll show you let me zoom in a little bit so you can see the effect it has and if you come back it just swaps back and forth with this tool, the second one here, you can sort of just do it gradual from either side. So now that we have that set, that looks alright. Let me try one more time. If you hold the shift key, it makes a perfect line so that everything is even. We're going to come up maybe a little further. The closer you get to the picture, the that's where the gradient starts. If you start it back here, then it blends it more right here as opposed to it being right here and right there. I kind of like it right there. Let me come out just a little bit. There, that looks better. It's focused in on his feet around the grass down there. It's a little blurred in the center. This is just a tutorial. I'm not being really specific. Alright, so from here, if you're done with the gradient option, and also depending on how your layers are set up, your vignette may not take effect. So we're going to come over to lens correction custom slide your vignette all the way down and you can see how much it moves right there and it doesn't work if you can't see it because of this layer right here so what you want to do you can see it in here when I take it away see it's only a little bit but that's because there's a gradient option right there so we're going to take that off we're going to control and click both layers control E to merge them so now whatever you do to one does to the other. So just go back and do it again. Blur. Sorry, uh, lens correction. Custom amount. It'll do it on a, on a picture of this shape. Um, it'll do it more on the corners than on the sides and the top. So just click OK. 
you could do it one more time to see what it looks like. So lens correction. Just a, a multiple process. Just keep doing it and doing it. Click OK. And if you like that, that's fine. If you want to leave it roughly about like that, but just bring in a little more around the edge, this is how you do it. Same thing we did earlier with the gradient tool. But for this one, we're going to have to add a new layer, move it down to the very bottom. We're going to turn the, you can leave that one on if you want to. Right click your gradient tool, go to paint bucket, make sure it's on black, and just make it black. Turn your middle layer back on. And on here, we're going to make another mask. We're not going to leave it, we're not going to invert it like that. If you leave it like this, our gradient tool reveals what's behind. If you invert it, then it reveals what's in front, if that makes sense. You can see this is the picture we're working on and this is our mask. So if we use the gradient tool, it'll do something like that. That's not what we want. We want our vignette on the outside, not the inside. So just come over here and control I ah, and use our gradient tool. Sort of play around, see how the make sure your colors are right if you if your colors aren't right and you and you make us you make a pass it's not going to do anything so don't worry about that and then you come in from this side and see how it looks if you don't like it just come in a little further and the more times you do it even the same amount it'll just darken it make it darker and darker darker so we'll just do that maybe bring it a little more from this side maybe not Maybe a little more from the top, a little from the bottom. Yep, and that's that's about how I would do it. And if you look over here at your mask, you can see that it's you can see where it's faded in, and it works with every mask, every gradient tool you use. Period. So if we turn this off, turn this off. Let's add let's add a new layer just to play around with it. We'll make it um, just for this sake. We'll make it. We'll use. Hmm, doo -doo -doo -doo, let's use this one. And we're going to come up here. This is really cool. I learned this. I learned this trick in a video by Gavin Hoey at GaffTrain.com. You can YouTube him. He's got a lot of stuff. You come down here and go to Difference, and you can play with all these different options here. But we're going to come over here and we're going to do our gradient, go back and forth as much as you want. See how it makes these little squigglies? And it uses the colors that are here or there. Or if you want to use this one, you can choose which color you want. So we want red and let's say hmm, blue. Let's try red and blue and see what it does. That's pretty cool. Now you can do this is another trick too, to give it some to get, to make it pop out and even edit it from this point. You can duplicate the layer, and on this layer, the top one, go to your blend mode. You can go to overlay. You can go to color burn. Actually, I just start at the top and arrow down and work my way through the options. That's pretty cool. That one too. I like that one. And also, if you this is this is the way I do it, just because once I'm at this point, I don't need to keep my layers separate. I'll just collapse them together. And then just go to filter, blur. Um I do Gaussian blur because that's I like the I don't I don't need to do little by little, I just do it from here. So if you just want to go up to like nine or so, it blurs it a pretty good bit. And um you can do other effects as well, like if you wanted to add a stroke to it, make sure it's on the inside because you can't see what's on the outside because your palette only goes so far. So you put it on the inside, make it whatever color you want, make it white for now. Thirteen is the lucky number. I like thirteen, you can go down a little bit. You make it pencil thin, as thin as you want, and um, you could do a drop. Sure, you can't do a drop shadow here, but you can make it sort of a satin, satin. 
well, that's the wrong one. What did I just do? Click on Sat, and you have to select that one. There you go. You can make it a little as dark as you want. Satin's a really dark option. You can do a pattern overlay. I don't like that. Color overlay. I don't like that either. Inner shadows. This only works if you have like a picture in a picture. So if this is your your baseline background picture, then all some of these other options won't work because you have to be able to see the outsides of them and whatnot. Like um, I'll show you a picture that really does work. Let me move it over here so I can find it real quick. All right, this is an example. I'm going to drop it right there. Actually, let me cancel that. Okay. I'm going to add this as a new picture. This is what a drop shadow will do. And this background right here was used with the same gradient tool a set on difference and blurred. And these three boxes have a stroke, have a drop shadow, and that was pretty much it. I don't have the um, I don't have the Photoshop document listed anywhere, so I can't show you the layers. I don't have those anymore. But that's that's what it would look like. Crap. Drop shadows, stroke. This has got a, this background has a stroke as well, but you can't see the drop shadow because it won't work. But back to this one. Turn these layers back on. Actually, you know what? We need to take all of these, combine them. This ought to be really interesting. Watch this. Go to Edit, Auto Blend Layers. We'll just see what it does. Didn't do anything. <laughs> let's um, let's try this. Free transform. Just center that up. And you can do something like that. Now you can put a stroke right here. Double click it. Go down to stroke. Actually, strokes up here now. CS6. Let's do uh, 8. Change the color to white. Hmm. What else? Change the opacity of the stroke. So it's kind of like a faint stroke which stroke is kind of a weird word let's go to drop shadow if you grab the picture you can grab the drop shadow and without having to change it right here you can just grab it here but you do have to use these options to get it to fade like so a little much all right, I kind of like it right here, bottom left or bottom right. That that just looks better to me. All right, I like that. That's that's a general idea. That's how you work with the gradient tool as far as blending your vignette a little more than what it allows. And I hope that helped. And give me all if y'all got any problems or questions. And party on.